Returning to our stand table from a previous example, let's build it out into a complete stand table projection. I'm going to add a stock table to the stand table because they really uh, complement each other or usually go together. That's 0 0.005454 times the diameter class squared times the trees per acre in that diameter class. And we can copy that down and copy the total over. Let's leave a provision in the stand table for some harvest TPA and harvest BA, which we might simulate later. Then what will be left are the TPA that are available to be grown forward into time and the BA grown forward into time. That TPA will be equal to the TPA we have minus whatever TPA are harvested and a similar calculation for the basal area. Let's copy those down as well and add in the totals. Oops, I missed the last two. Now I have some growth data from a prior study. I'm going to use those growth data. They're just average increments by diameter class in the stand table projection. So I've copied them and now I'll paste them into my spreadsheet. Recall the movement ratio is just the diameter increment divided by the class width, which is two inches in this example. The movement ratio represents the fraction of the trees that will be upgrowth for the projection cycle. I can calculate upgrowth by multiplying the movement ratio by the trees per acre that I'm going to project forward and do that for every diameter class. Okay, here comes the accounting. The TPA at time t plus 10, which is the implicit cycle in this scenario, is going to be equal to the trees per acre that we have to simulate forward, less the upgrowth growing into the next diameter class. That's a special case for the smallest diameter class if we don't simulate ingrowth. For the next class, again, we have the TPA less the upgrowth that's going up, but we have to add into it the upgrowth coming in from the class immediately below it. There's one more special case which is the largest diameter class. We're showing 1.3 trees per acre here of upgrowth, but where do they go? Without creating a 26 inch class, I have nowhere to put them. One thing is just to assume the 24 inch is a catch-all class. The only way trees leave that class is through harvest, so it's really 24 plus. And to complete the picture, let's include basal area at time t plus 10 years. And again, that's just 0 0.005454 times the DBH class midpoint squared times the trees per acre that we have at that point in time. Now let's copy these two totals so we can double check over here. Oops, I missed one again. Double check over here that everything is working out. We started with 167 trees per acre and 115 square feet per acre of basal area. Since we've simulated no harvest, that hasn't changed. But now we have simulated 10 year growth through movement ratios. We still have 167 trees per acre because we haven't simulated any harvest and there's no mortality or ingrowth implicit in this simulation. But we have more basal area because we have simulated tree growth. Now let's simulate a tree harvest and we'll assume we're doing some kind of thinning from below in order to simulate a shelter wood. And let's take everything except let's say the top three diameter classes. If we harvest all those trees per acre then the harvested basal area is the same. Everything except the top three diameter classes. We can clean things up to make it look more attractive, maybe write justify or do some formatting to make the stand table projection more interesting. We can also uh, add some totals or carry those totals across so we have the total harvested BA and trees per acre and maybe we should have uh, changed the number of decimals here to be a constant with the rest of the stand table projection. So there we have the final model. You could revise this to simulate a different kind of silviculture such as single tree selection but remember that implicit in these delta dbh calculations are the growing conditions that were present when those trees grew and they may or may not be relevant given dramatic changes in the stand structure. So there you have a final stand table projection. I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, please ask and make sure you check up on the Canvas page for additional videos.